Amazons and witches, welcome back. I'm Lori the Witchcrafter and we're still in the season of summer and in our tradition, in the Amazon tradition, we, during our first year in a day study, uh, right around the time of Harvest Mass, we that's when we will initiate guardian priestesses. It's also the time when uh, new women will make their, their staves or their individual staff. And um, a staff um, well, there's a card in the deck, of course, and you've been working on that, so you might want to get that card out, make sure it's done, and make sure it's kind of hanging around with you as you're working on your staff. Now, there are several ways you can you can make a staff. Um, you can buy lumber and certainly cut it down and start shaping it. You can decorate them in any way that you want. You can put crystals and feathers and bits and parts and bangles and beads. Um, but... In our tradition, in the Amazon tradition, um, we think it's pretty important to establish a connection or a relationship with a tree, a young sapling that's maybe you know a couple inches around in diameter. And you start asking permission, um, asking it if it would like to become your staff. And if you take the time and you get to know that tree and you stop and you listen, lay hands on that tree and, and become one with the tree, um, the tree will tell you whether it's willing to give itself to you as a staff. Um, I have worked with several in a grove out behind our house and there are ones that say, no, absolutely not. And then there are others that say, maybe in a couple of years. And then there are others that say, yes, I will. And because that grove is live oak, if you can get to live oak, that's, that's really great because you're taking the trunk of the tree. You're taking the heartwood of the tree, in essence, killing the tree. It's giving you its life force. But with live oak, even if you cut them off at the ground, they come back. So that's why I like working with live oak and I will start, I've cut staves for, for every woman in our coven. And it's taken a few years for them to say yes, um, the trees to say yes. But it's been a wonderful experience doing that. So I highly suggest that you do take the time to go out, find a tree, work with it, ask its permission, and then cut. And make sure that after you cut, or even before you give, the offerings that are um, uh, of things like, you know, shiny things like coins, um, water, um, some fertilizer even would be great at the base of the tree just to give back is a symbolic offering for what you're taking. Um, so with that being said, let's head out to the workshop, to the garage, and we'll get started. Okay, so here I am out in the garage and we're getting ready to make, I'm getting ready to make myself a new staff. Now, normally uh, I would choose the entire trunk of a young tree. Um, but when I was in England, uh, this branch I, I don't know that it's actually a trunk. I suspect it's more of a branch. But it called me and presented itself to me. And it was perfectly at my heart height. So this is what I'm going to work on today. Again, um, I would recommend that you uh, build a relationship with a tree. Get its permission. Take the trunk wood and cut it to the height of your heart. Now, some folks like it taller, and, and that's fine, I guess. Um, I was taught by my teacher, Falcon River, that you want to cut your your stave to the your staff to the height of your heart. So that's it. We'll get started with this. Okay, so we're going to work this very much like we did with the wand. It's just a larger version of the wand, okay? So here we go.
right, so there it is with the initial sanding and all of the bark taken off. There's some beautiful markings in it and uh, they'll come up as we sand it uh, by hand. So we'll go on over to the other side of the shop for that. Okay, so we're at the other work table and I've got some 120 sandpaper here that I'm going to uh, work by hand. And I'll probably, of course, speed the video up to get through this part. But again, just you're putting some muscle into it. You're taking out, uh, you know, all of the bumps and so on and so forth and making it real smooth so it'll be nice to handle. Okay, so that's uh, a real good going over with the 120 sandpaper. And then I'm gonna jump straight to some steel wool. It's the, the lowest uh, uh, grit uh, steel wool you can get. And I've got some arthritis in my hands, so my hands are pretty sore right now. But when you're working with steel wool, you really wanna put some muscle into it. Um, because it brings up, uh, not only does it make it really, really smooth, um, it tends to bring up a little um, uh, of the more natural color of the wood if you really put some, some meat in, or some weight into it, some muscle. Now I don't know what kind of wood this is specifically. Like I said, the branch was just pre presented itself to me in the woods uh, in England, and it was a forest that I was unfamiliar with, so I really don't know what's gonna happen with this, this particular wood. All I can tell you is that it feels very warm to me, and it's a little bit spalted, so uh, I think it's gonna be wonderful. Well, I can tell you that the color does not seem to be changing much, which I find very interesting. I'm almost wondering if this might be Rowan. Don't know. Don't know. Uh, I know when I made my Rowan wand, the color did not change much when I used the steel wool. Um, that's the only reason I'm, I'm thinking that, but you know, who knows? All I know is that she's feeling very soft and, and very nice in my hands. Okay, so that's it with the steel wool. She's nice and smooth. I can work with her without fear of getting any splinters. So now it's time to put on some polyurethane. We'll clean up the workspace here and then we'll, we'll get to that.
Okay, so here we are. We've got our Minwax Wipe on Poly, and I recommend using a little flathead screwdriver to pop the lid open. Use a shop rag. It's fairly clean and dust free. I've tried to wipe up a lot of our sawdust. So we have a relatively clean space to work in. And here we go. Oh yeah, that's gonna be beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Colors pop right up. Don't forget to do the, the bottom of your staff fairly well. You know, get it fairly well coated because after all, that's the part that's going to be hitting the ground and coming in contact with more moisture than any other part of the staff. Now I can tell you the way this is soaking it in, um, it's a fairly light wood um, that's probably going to need, you know, I would say, three or four coats to get it to the shine that I would like it. You know, I'm, I'm fond of telling you that I'm a pretty uh, simple, pretty basic kind of gal. I like my tools pretty basic, but the one thing I do like to indulge in is a little shine on the wood. That just always makes me feel really wonderful. Wonderful and warm and rich. Rich with magic, I should say. Yeah, this, uh, this is really soaking it in. So what I'll do is I'll, once I finish, I will let it dry overnight. And then I will uh, wipe it down very quickly, very gently with some steel wool again. Nothing as intense as what I did to get it soft. Um, Basically, you're using that steel wool just to, to sand down any imperfections that might have been left with the first coat of, this, of the poly. And then I'll redo it. And I'll keep doing that for several days. And, uh, you know, at the end of the year and the day study, my plan is to bring back in one episode, the final episode of the year, all of the tools that we have made, <coughs> excuse me, got a little sawdust, and uh, put them out on the altar for you to see and to consider how far we've come together this year. Okay, so that is it. There she is. And I'll let her dry, like I said, uh, until tomorrow. And then I'll give her a, a wipe down uh, with the steel wool, just a, just a quick wipe, and then another coat. And I'll probably do that the next day for the next few days, at least four days, I think, because she's real soft and she's really soaking it in. But we'll see how it goes. So that's it for now. I hope that you are currently building a relationship 
with a young sapling tree, you know, anywhere from two and a half, you know, down to an inch diameter. And I'll show you what we look like together. Pretty sawdusty and sweaty because it's really hot this summer. But here we are. Hope you can see me. And that's it for now. Uh, and we'll see you next time on the Amazon Witchcrafter.